Hi. Greetings. Mm -hmm. We're in Genesis chapter 42 at verse 25. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to read from verse 25. We What's just happened is Joseph is, is I hesitate to say playing a game with his brother. He's not. He wants to know their character. Testing them. He's testing them, therefore. He's testing their honesty, their words, because they're, they're, they've made claims about their family life that he has no way of knowing mm -hmm. whether they're telling the truth or not. So he wants to test them on that level. He's testing their character, though. And this is how the story proceeds, because he's sending Simeon, well, he's keeping Simeon there under in custody while the other brothers go back to their father. And it says Joseph gave, gave orders to to fill their bags with grain and to replace every man's money in his sack and to give them provisions for the journey. This was done for them. Then they looked their don they loaded their donkeys with their grain and departed. And as one of them opened his sack to give his donkey fodder at the lodging place, he saw his money in the mouth of his sack. He said to his brothers, My money has been put back. Here it is in the mouth of my sack. At this their hearts failed them, and they turned trembling to one another, saying, what is this that God has done to us? When they came to Jacob, their father, in the land of Canaan, they told him all that had happened to them, saying, The man, the lord of the land, spoke roughly to us and took us to be spies of the land. But we said to him, We are honest men. We have never been spies. We are twelve brothers, sons of our father. One is no more. The youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. Then the man, the lord of the country, said to us, by this I will know that you are honest men. Leave one of your brothers here with me. Take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother to me, so I shall know that you are not spies, but e that you are honest men. I will grant your brother to you, and you may trade in the land. Then it happened as they emptied their sacks, that surprisingly each man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And Jacob, their father, said to them, You have bereaved me. Joseph is no more, Simeon is no more, and you want to take Benjamin. All these things are against me. Then Reuben spoke to his father, saying, Kill my two sons if I do not bring him back to you. But put him in my hands, and I will bring him back to you. But he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If any calamity should befall him along the way in which you go, then you should bring down my gray hair with sorrow to the grave. Oh, you see, again, J Jacob is now old, and he's still lacking self-awareness. He doesn't see the hand of God in the way things are working out. Mm -hmm. All things are against me. Well, we've heard him talk like this before, mm -hmm. back in the Shechem massacre incident. Mm -hmm. It was not the deaths of dozens, if not hundreds, of men that he was lamenting. Yeah. It was his own reputation in the neighborhood. And the danger that this might bring to him. And the family. So yeah. everything's against me? Well... No, you're alive. You, they came back with food. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the, the very fact that he's raising up his other son, Benjamin, as if he's more precious, far more him. precious than the other brothers. Yeah. Isn't favoritism that, a, isn't is, that why you're in this mess now? That's right. Favoritism has, favoritism has been the problem all along, both with the wives and with the children. Yeah. And the children witness this, and he's still carrying on this way. So... Yeah, he's not learned from his experiences. He's still very self-centered. So it's it's an interesting thing, I would say, that Jacob obviously does have a measure of faith. You know, he he's a man of, of God, and he's being directed by God and helped by God. But it's not made him less selfish of a man. It's not made him into a saint, as you would say. He's, he's not pure. And he doesn't have a very good insight into providence. We remember that Joseph later, when the brothers mm -hmm. find out who he is, 
Yeah. Joseph says to them, God sent me down here for good to, to basically save your lives. Sent yeah. me down ahead of you. He's, he sees the hand behind the scenes, but they don't see anything. Uh, he says everything's against me, and they say before that, what is this that God has done to us? No, yeah. God's done nothing to you. No. Everything that has happened to you that doesn't look good, yeah. including your guilt, is because of you. Yeah, but they, they do translate, and I think we said that in the last one, they translate any events that make them uncomfortable as God is now, you know, giving me what I deserve because of what I did to Joseph. Yeah. Uh, you know, at least for the for the brothers, that's what they see, that that there's somehow God is is angry with us, and I guess Jacob sees this too when he sees the money. He's also afraid. Okay. But, they were afraid of danger. But Jacob's life has always been characterized by fear, mm -hmm. which shows a lack of faith. Yeah. Little faith. Yeah. And you realize that everything that's happened, though, is because you stepped out of the way. Mm -hmm. And I remember that text in Genesis 18 where God says, after he renames Abram, Abraham, mm -hmm. father of nations, he says to Abraham, I have come become acquainted with you because I wanted you to teach your children to keep my way mm -hmm. and these children are not keeping his god's way they're not acting in faith much of the time yeah so that mm -hmm. this statement what is this that god has done to us to me this and and also the dad's well, all this has come again all this has happened against me or come against me mm -hmm. how off how opposite that is to what paul says at the end of romans 8 right yeah when he says all things work for good for those who love god and well, even you're... even Joseph sees this towards the end of all his trials. He's he's seeing the hand of God in this, uh, you, you know. And I, and I think if you if you look at your life, you you could see that, but you but you might not see it at the time. No, it just looks like a real negative thing that's happened. But did did some benefit to you or to others come from that event? But how do you get this God's eye view then? Joseph has it. Yeah. And he's young. He's one of the youngest of the brothers. Yeah. He has this God's eye view. Well, why don't you? And does it have anything to do, therefore, with Joseph's suffering? Mm. Mm -hmm. Paul had to suffer too to come up with his idea that all things work for good. He has a sense that God's been with him, not just since he, before he was a Christian, but before his birth, he says yeah. in Galatians. Yeah. And working it all out to the end of good. Yeah. Good for you and good for your family, your nation, your Well, in Joseph's case and community. Paul's case, for the good of the whole world. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got some quotes here, Barnhouse. Yeah. Barnhouse says, In all the record, this was the first time that these brothers mentioned the Lord. Seemingly, God was not in all their thoughts through their early years. Uh, violence, murder, envy, the selling of a brother into slavery, lying to their father, none of these things was modified by one word about God. They used the mark of the covenant as a sub, how do you say that, subterfuge, mm. to perpetrate murder, but the God of the covenant was absent from their thoughts. Now, with conscience aroused, memory active, and fears large, they saw God in the actions of the unknown Joseph. The goodness of God is used to lead us to repentance. And here it was taking effect. That's, that's a really good insight there, that they... I hadn't noticed that, that they had never mentioned, never mentioned God, God before. And th but they did implicate God. But what he's talking about there is the massacre at Shechem again. Yeah. They use circumcision, the mark of the covenant, to trick people. Yeah. Yeah. To murder people. Mm-hmm. And that, but, in but that they're like their father who, yeah. used, who used the covenant as, a, as an excuse to, tr mom did too, to, yeah. to, to, to trick their father. Yeah. But there's no sensitivity to God. Uh, but but the fact that God it uses even your sin to your advantage mm -hmm. to bring you to repentance. This is this is his 
his uh, desire all along is to bring these men to a position of repentance. And it seems to work. Mm -hmm. They seem to be changed by the time they get introduced, reintroduced to Joseph. Mm -hmm. Here's Campbell Morgan on it. This was not the language of faith, and yet surely no one can criticize him, for the outlook was dark enough. Talking about Jacob's remark again here, mm. everything's against me. <laughs> Had he been a man of simpler faith, perchance he might have been able to say, all things work together for good. This was actually so, for those things which seemed to be against him were working together for the restoration to him of his long-lost son, and for the moving forward towards completion of those gracious purposes for which he and his father stood. We may surely learn, that as we listen to the, the wail of Jacob, that it is never wise to measure the facts of any hour by the limitations of our own vision. Mm -hmm. And here's John Calvin. But the chief burden of the evil was the temptation which oppressed him, that the promise of God might prove illusory and vain, for he had no hope except from the promised seed. But he seemed to be bringing up devils at home. Calvin's usual bluntness, so he's bringing up devils. God has to help these men to a, a, a firmer faith, right? Mm -hmm. A better character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bringing up devils at home from whom a blessing was no more to be expected than life from death. He thought Joseph to be dead. Benjamin alone remained to him, uncorrupted. How could the salvation of the world proceed from such a vicious offspring? He must, therefore, have been endowed with great constancy, seeing he did not cease to rely upon God. So again, Calvin sees some faith, but not enough to mm -hmm. to to to, to yeah. make these these uh, these sons into saints. Poor perception, even of your of your own, which you know you, you can see that that oftentimes you don't see things that others would see if they were looking in on your family. Right? Surely you can say that 36 or 7 years ago you didn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. No. No. Everything was against you. Yeah. Don't don't use your present circumstances or emotions as the determining factor of whether or not God is doing anything. Yeah. Mhm. Mm the link is William Wilberforce, uh, Providence, the hidden hand of God mm -hmm. in shaping great Christians. Good. See you next time.